four months. That's all it takes. While your neighbor is still feeding his calves, wondering when they'll be ready, you could already be cashing your check at the slaughterhouse. Sounds impossible? That's exactly what the big operations don't want you to know. Because this intensive method, when done correctly, can completely transform your cattle business. But here's the thing. 90% of farmers who try this fail. And the reason why might shock you. Stay with me because what I'm about to share could be the difference between profit and bankruptcy on your ranch. Let's start with the brutal truth. Traditional fattening methods are outdated, inefficient, and they're costing you thousands of dollars every single month. When you wean a calf and follow conventional practices, you're looking at 8 to 12 months before that animal reaches slaughter weight. 8 to 12 months of feed costs, veterinary expenses, labor, and land use. But the intensive method flips everything on its head. Here's how it works. The moment you wean that calf, typically between 6 to 8 months of age and around 300 to 400 pounds, the clock starts ticking. Your goal? Reach market weight of around 1,000 to 1,200 pounds in just four months. That means you need an average daily gain of approximately four to five pounds per day. And yes, this is absolutely achievable, but only if you understand the science behind accelerated growth. The first critical phase is the adaptation period. And this is where most farmers lose the game before it even begins. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot take a calf from pasture or milk-based diet and immediately slam it with high concentrate feed. Their rumen isn't ready. Their digestive system will revolt. You'll see bloat, acidosis, and in the worst cases, death. So what do you do? During the first two weeks post weaning, you gradually transition the calf's diet. Start with high quality forage, think alfalfa hay or excellent grass hay, mixed with small amounts of grain. We're talking about 20 to 30% concentrate in the total diet. Every three to four days, you increase the concentrate portion by five to 10%. This slow ramp up allows the rumen microbiome to adapt, building the bacteria populations that can handle starch and sugars from grains. But here's something almost nobody tells you. During this transition, you must monitor water intake obsessively. A calf on high concentrate diet will drink two to three times more water than one on pasture. If they don't have constant access to clean, fresh water, their feed conversion drops dramatically. One dehydrated day can set you back a week in growth. Are you checking your water troughs twice daily? If not, you're leaving money on the table. By week three, your calves should be on a diet that's approximately 70 to 80% concentrate and 20 to 30% roughage. This is your power formula for explosive growth. Your concentrate mix should be energy dense, primarily corn or barley based, supplemented with protein sources like soybean meal or cottonseed meal. You're targeting a diet with about 14 to 16% crude protein and an energy density of around 1.2 to 1.3 megacalories per pound. Now, let me share something that separates amateur operations from professional intensive fattening systems. It's called the bunk management strategy. You don't just dump feed once a day and walk away. In intensive systems, you're feeding two to three times daily, delivering smaller portions that the calves consume completely within four to six hours. Why? Because fresh feed stimulates appetite. Stale feed that sits for 12 hours ferments, becomes unpalatable, and reduces intake. Lower intake equals lower gains, equals failure to meet your four-month target. And here's the cliffhanger most people ignore until it's too late. What about health management? Because pushing an animal to gain four to five pounds daily puts immense metabolic stress on their system. This is not natural growth. This is engineered performance. And without proper health protocols, you're building a house of cards that will collapse. Before we go deeper into the health protocols that will make or break your intensive system, if you're getting value from this, hit that subscribe button right now. Join Biggest Bulls and Cow, where we're building a community of serious cattle producers who want real information, not fairy tales. We post content like this every week. Don't miss out. Now, 
let's talk about keeping these animals alive and thriving under intensive pressure. Your health protocol begins before the calves even enter your intensive facility. Vaccination is non-negotiable. At minimum, you need protection against infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, bovine viral diarrhea, parainfluenza 3, bovine respiratory syncytial virus, and clostridial diseases. These are commonly available in combination vaccines. Administer these at least two weeks before weaning so their immune system is primed when stress hits. Here's a mistake I see constantly. Farmers vaccinate, then immediately start the intensive feeding program and wonder why they have a respiratory disease outbreak three weeks in. The issue? Stress is cumulative. Weaning is stress. Transportation is stress. New environment is stress. Diet change is stress. Rapid growth is stress. Stack all of these without proper immune support and you create the perfect storm for disease. So how do you prevent this? First, use a preconditioning period. If possible, wean cans and keep them in a familiar environment for one to two weeks before moving them to your intensive facility. This separates weaning stress from environmental stress. Second, supplement with vitamins and minerals that support immune function. Vitamin E and selenium are crucial. Zinc and copper support tissue growth and immune response. These aren't luxuries, they're insurance policies. Third, and this is critical, Monitor for early signs of respiratory disease daily. I'm talking about checking every single animal every single morning. Look for nasal discharge, coughing, labored breathing, ear drooping, or depression. In intensive systems, diseases spread like wildfire because animals are in close confinement. One sick calf on Monday becomes 10 sick calves by Friday. Early detection and immediate treatment with appropriate antibiotics can save your entire group. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, facilities and space management. You cannot run an intensive four-month program in a muddy pasture. These animals need a controlled environment. Ideally, you're working with covered or semi-covered pens that protect from extreme weather, concrete or packed dirt floors that drain well and can be cleaned regularly. Each calf needs approximately 50 to 70 square feet of space. Too little space increases aggression and disease transmission. Too much space and you're wasting resources and making management harder. Ventilation is another factor that's wildly underestimated. High concentrate diets produce more metabolic heat. Put 20 calves in an enclosed barn with poor airflow during summer and you'll see heat stress tank your gains within days. Heat stressed cattle reduce feed intake, increase water consumption and their growth rate plummets. Simple solutions like proper roof height, side openings for cross ventilation, or fans in extreme climates make enormous differences. Feed quality consistency is your next major lever. In four months, you cannot afford a week of poor quality grain or moldy hay. Every batch of feed should be tested for moisture content, mycotoxin levels, and nutritional composition. Mycotoxins, especially aflatoxins and vomitoxins, are silent killers in intensive operations. They suppress immune function, reduce feed intake, and damage liver function. If you're buying feed from multiple suppliers or mixing your own, invest in regular testing. The cost is minimal compared to losing weeks of growth or worse, losing animals. Here's something that will surprise you. Cattle behavior and grouping strategy directly impacts your success rate. Never mix calves of drastically different sizes in the same pen. Larger, more aggressive calves will dominate the feed bunk, pushing smaller ones away. This creates a vicious cycle where big calves get bigger and small calves fall further behind. Group animals by weight class, ideally within 50 pounds of each other. Resort every three to four weeks as growth rates vary. Let's address the economic reality because intensive doesn't mean cheap your feed costs will be significantly higher than traditional systems. You're looking at approximately 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of concentrate per calf over four months, plus roughage. At current grain prices, that's a substantial input cost. Add in health products, labor, facilities, and you need to calculate your break-even point precisely. The advantage? You're turning capital three times faster than conventional systems. Your money isn't tied up in growing cattle for a year, it's cycling every four months. But here's the trap. If market prices drop when your calves hit market weight, you have zero flexibility. They must sell. They're at optimal finish. 
Holding them longer means you're into diminishing returns, where feed conversion worsens and profit margins evaporate. This is why intensive producers must understand futures markets, forward contracting, or have established buyer relationships that guarantee price floors. One final element that's absolutely crucial, data tracking. You must weigh these animals every two weeks minimum. You should know exactly what each group is gaining daily. If you're not hitting your target of four to five pounds per day by week six, something is wrong. Maybe it's feed quality, maybe it's subclinical disease, maybe it's environmental stress, but you cannot fix what you don't measure. Keep detailed records of feed intake, weight gains, health treatments, and costs. This data will refine your system with each group you run through. And here's what almost nobody considers until it's too late. What happens if you successfully finish these animals in four months, but the slaughterhouse is booked out for six weeks? Your perfect timeline collapses. Overfinished cattle start depositing excessive fat, feed conversion crashes, and your profit disappears. Build relationships with multiple slaughter facilities. Understand their scheduling. Book your spots in advance based on your projected finish dates. This coordination is what separates profitable intensive operations from expensive failures. So there you have it. From weaning to slaughter in four months. It's intense, it's demanding, and it's not for everyone. But for those who master the science, the management, and the discipline, it's one of the most profitable approaches in modern cattle production. Now I want to hear from you. Have you tried intensive fattening methods? What challenges did you face? Drop your experience in the comments below because your story might help another farmer avoid a costly mistake. And if you found this valuable, share it with another cattle producer who needs to see this. We're building something special here at Biggest Bulls and Cow, a community where real ranchers share real knowledge. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and let's keep learning together. Because better information creates better results, and better results build better ranches. I'll see you in the next one.